I want to talk about starting life after university. I lived fairly independently for a rather long time, both before university and for a good portion of my university as well. However, moving to an entirely new city where I had no support network, at least none that was readily available at the time, to start a full-time job was daunting. The fact that this was happening during some of the heaviest restrictions in place during the COVID-19 pandemic in Canada really didn't help, but eventually I did get through it. At the time of making this video, it has only been a couple of weeks since I moved, but I still think that I got a very difficult part behind me, and I'm sure that I have enough to share that may prove useful or insightful to you. Let me quickly address a rather important point. I put computer science in the title not just because I want the YouTube algorithm to recommend this video to a wider audience, believe me I do, but also because me being a computer science graduate and a software engineer has affected some decisions I had to make, and this context may be helpful for you. Anyways, that's enough preamble. Due to the fact that I was lucky enough to secure a job before I finished university, I did not have to spend too many cycles worrying about that. This certainly made life a bit easier, especially since I knew what city I would end up living and working in. This is fairly important, as the next step of starting your life relies on knowing where you will be, looking for a place to live. You should know a couple of things about how much money you want to budget and what sort of attributes of the place you want to live in you're looking for. Once you know your budget, you can start scouting out the areas. I did this before the last semester was over, just casually browsing places, imagining what my life might be like in each one. I found that in British Columbia, the most popular places to find places is Craigslist, and in Ontario, it seemed to be Kijiji. There are specialized websites like Zillow, Padmapper, Walkscore, and others that can help looking at places, but I really didn't use them, so I can't talk about them. For me, I was lucky in that I already knew Vancouver and knew what area I wanted to be in, so I set myself a budget and started looking at places. As I looked at more and more places, I started to piece together what sort of attributes I actually care about, and they are, in no particular order, as follows. Being pet friendly. Being within a 20-minute walk to a SkyTrain station. Being able to get to downtown Vancouver within 40 minutes. Being large enough that I could realistically separate off a part of the apartment to be a home office to work remotely from. Being able to get to work within 15 minutes by public transit once the pandemic is over, that is. Now, these are quite important. But there were also a couple small things that I was looking for that weren't a necessity, such as having access to Nova's intranet. It's a local ISP, intranet in Canada kind of sucks, uh, but Nova's doesn't in my opinion. Having a den was a huge plus as I could put my office there and suddenly have really good separation between both, well, work, work and life. And then lastly, having in-suite laundry, really not a necessity, but a Damn big plus in my books. Anyways, all of these also had to fit in my budget. As you can see, whether I had roommates or not did not really factor into my decision much, although I do prefer to live alone. Luckily, I managed to find a place that fit absolutely all of those criteria. However, I had to go against the conventional wisdom to get the place. The conventional wisdom dictates that you should never sign a contract for a place to live without seeing it first. And I strongly agree with that. But when I saw the place uh, that I'm staying at now, I took the opportunity right away and got lucky enough to be approved right away for it as well. Um, in order to follow the conventional wisdom, I got my flight tickets for at least a week out from starting my job so that I had the time to check out places while already in the city without the stress of starting a full-time job. I also booked a place to stay temporarily while I was looking for places to stay at permanently and having a home base to start working from is a pretty important thing. However, as I mentioned earlier, I found a place ahead of time, so I just had some extra time on my hands to spend in Vancouver instead. It would have been great if there wasn't a pandemic outside, but whatever. Now, I'd like to discuss some things about setting up where you're living, as that is important as well. First things first, you need to know how much money you have left and understand the minimal set of things you need to have to be able to actually live in a new place. As an example, having a bookshelf is not really a necessity, at least not when you just move in. I found that the absolute minimal set for myself was a bed, cooking utensils, a coffee pot, and a kettle. Everything aside from that was not an absolute immediate necessity. Let me give you a bit of advice. Do not skimp out on the bed. Having a good bed makes a huge difference in sleep quality, and if you buy something bad, it'll still be expensive enough to be a problem, and you're going to have to keep it for at least a while. But a good bed, on the other hand, will last you for many, many years. So, as an example, I set myself a budget of about $1,300 for the bed frame and mattress alone. Anyway, 
with this minimal set in hand, get ready to spend. Whatever you budgeted, add at least $20 more because you will inevitably forget things and some of them will be quite expensive. As an example, here's a list of all the things that I knew I had to get and budgeted for. Well, there's also a list of all the things that I managed to forget about and it's right here. Uh, let me point out a couple particularly memorable items such as pillows, bed sheets, duvet, baking tray, calendars, screwdrivers, measuring tape. You know, this list has more stuff on it. Anyway, I did get lucky. My minimal set did not require a desk or a working space as I was lucky enough to have a, had a fireplace that could substitute as a standing desk. I was also willing to use the kitchen island as a desk for a while if necessary, but it's too short, not really comfortable, and I would rather not, especially since I had nothing to sit on. So the fireplace turned out to be just the right height to be a substitute for a standing desk. Speaking about standing desks, I've never used a standing desk before. However, I thought that since I saw so many of my coworkers fawning over them over the years, they must be good. One thing I did not account for is that most people aren't actually stupid. And when their feet get tired, they sit back down. I had nothing here. I moved into an entirely empty apartment and started working right away. Uh, so I had nothing to sit on, no bed, no bar stool. And you know, this like, cheap Ikea bar stool that I'm sitting on right now, it came in way later anyway. Uh, and let me tell you, standing on your feet for 10 hours straight is really not fun. Anyways, clearly I'm starting to digress. I think I kind of made the point that I want to make in this video. However, I am thinking of adding more videos under the starting life after university umbrella in the future, as I get to things that are worth talking about. One such topic being financial literacy, or maybe talking about the importance and necessity of hobbies. Another one that a friend of mine suggested is actually the process of what I looked for and how I evaluated places to stay before I well, found a place. Either way, we will see. In the meantime, if you'd like me to discuss something else, please let me know.